Over the weekend, I was watching some YouTube videos and came across one on, I think it was the Jelly Arts channel, and this gal was doing a transfer technique. I will find that video and put it either down in the video description or up in the corner or somewhere. And this was a technique I'd not seen before. I don't know how I missed it. Um, after I started looking for it on purpose, I found several videos and I, it just escaped my radar. But it was totally cool. Later that afternoon, some of us local gals went over to Rosemary Morris's awesome, fabulous studio for a play day. And of course, the first thing we did was <laughs> rip out our gel plate and start trying to do this technique. We found that there is a big learning curve, but it does work. And it's really kind of cool. It is a transfer technique if you're wanting, you know, an, an absolute pristine copy of your image, then don't do a transfer, obviously. Cut the thing out and glue it down, you know. <laughs> Transferring is for a kind of funky, weird, distressed look. And also know that whatever image you're going to transfer, you're going to use it up. That'll be the end of it. So if it's an image that you're just going to be heartbroken if the transfer doesn't work, and you've lost that image forever, make a copy of it to keep so that you know, you'll know you at least have a copy because this is <laughs> kind of what it looks like after you've transferred it, whether it works or not, you know, your image is, is done. And you're gonna need, okay, let me just, let me show you the ones I did, what worked and what didn't and why as far as I can tell. This was my original. I am using glossy, um, images out of magazines. I'm actually pulling from three sources. I've got a National Geographic because they have nice glossy photos. I've got this illustration. It's called the Black Book of Illustration 2004-2005. I picked this up at Texas Art Asylum a while back and it just has fabulous fun illustrations and they're working out really well if when I you know when there's no user error so something like that bright colorful pictures or no color at all and do something black and white this is a, an MGM story I found this at a thrift store a while back and it has glossy pictures but they're black and white and this high contrast thing works really really well and that's really what you need, whether you're using color photos or black and white, you need high contrast. I kind of, kind of think that that's um, a big part of what makes these work or not work. So, now, on these that I've already done, you're really not going to be able to tell what the original picture looked like because it's all painted over, but you can kind of get an idea so you can see how it kind of came out. That one, yeah, yeah kind of sort of okay, not fabulous. This one had high contrast. I had high hopes for it. Thought it was gonna be awesome. Not so much. <laughs> I'm really not sure what happened there. But um, yeah, that didn't really work. <laughs> this one was great. Black outlines and the colors were really bright, but you know, it had good heavy black outlines. So it did super well. You can kind of see where it came from. This one didn't have a lot of contrast, but it sure had pretty colors and I like the pattern. It actually worked pretty well. And this face did kind of okay, not great. Again, really not a lot of contrast, but still kind of a cool result. I can't even see what that was. Oh yeah, this one was cool. It was like a, almost like a fashion drawing thing. And it was really kind of sketchy to begin with, so it actually transferred really well. I don't remember what that was. Oh yeah, <laughs> it was that of National Geographic and it was some kind of a, like elk lips or something, which is a delicacy in some country. It was totally disgusting, but it had this beautiful floral background. <laughs> so I really, oops, I really wasn't too disappointed that that didn't turn out better. 
And this one, I don't remember what it looked like, except that it had these two things and something up here and a person over here. And part of those printed out well. The person kind of lost its head, but um, it's still cool. Just marks, really, you know. Uh, this was on the MGM black and white, and I printed it onto another page out of that book that was just the index, and it just did beautifully. It transferred really well, really clear, black and white, high gloss pages, just do fabulous. And then this was another one out of there on plain paper, and again, beautiful. It's really fun to pull them off when they work well like this. It's just like, oh, magic. This one, uh, you can kind of see, I didn't use very much paint. I found that I was really using way too much paint on a lot of these, which was why I was having trouble. But I used just a little bit of paint, and then I thought, ooh, what would happen if I just put a blank sheet over it before I added color, and it pulled off kind of like a ghost print, which was kind of cool. And then I went ahead and put the paint on for color, and was still able to get a cool print. So, I will show you the process and kind of talk about what I found works and doesn't work. But regardless of what I say, this is a lot of trial and error. And it's just going to depend on how much paint you put on, because I can't tell you put an exact teaspoon. <laughs> you know, you're going to squeeze it out and whatever comes out, comes out. <laughs> so I'm just going to tell you what works for me, but you may need to play with it. When we did this at Rosemary's house, we thought it was the paint we were using that was the problem, because we were just using craft paint. So we switched to a, a fluid uh, more like a fluid acrylic, the DecoArt Media Paints, and those worked really well. So we thought, okay, it's the paint, but then playing with it more at home, I don't think so much it's the paint itself as how much you put on and how long you press down. So that may not make any sense to you, so I'm going to show you. Okay, this is a pretty, pretty high contrast picture of Paul McCartney. So... I'm going to try it with some black. There we go. That looks good. Evenly covered, but not overkill. I'll put him face down. Good adhesion. I'm going to wipe off these little edges because I just end up smearing them all over the place. And you don't want to go too long on here or it'll just act like a clean off sheet and then nothing will be left behind. That one actually did really well. <laughs> that is exactly what you want when you're doing this. Okay, now let him dry or hit him with some uh, room temperature air here. Now, I want, I don't know, this weird green. And this yellow. And that was uh, citron green and bright yellow.
And this is the one that you can just rub, 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 let it sit. Because it's kind of our clean off sheet. So see as many of these prints as I've already done, I still sometimes don't get enough ink on there or I get too much. There's just a fine line between what works and what doesn't. Ooh. That is just magic. All right, so cool. I think that's the best one I've ever done. I <laughs> did it on video. Man, it's almost like I know what I'm doing. This is awesome. <laughs> now every other one I do from here on out will be a total fail. <laughs> okay, uh, black. Now you can use a different color on here, like a dark. I mean, I would stay with dark colors, but a dark um, blue, like a Prussian blue or an eggplant purple, those would look really nice. That one did well. Man, look at me go. <laughs> Okay, I'm forgetting about my colors. Bright yellow, the same snow titanium white. This one was cadmium red and orange twist. Now it's always possible that some of these were like specialty colors that are maybe not around anymore. I don't know. But you can find something similar, I'm sure. Hmm. Pretty awesome. How about this giraffe? This is a Nat Geo. Let's try that little giraffe. Oh, if I had some brown. Let me find some I have a like mm -hmm. a dark brown. I didn't have a really dark one, but I've got this um espresso. I'm going to use, and I'm just going to add a little black with it. Oh, that's a little bit too much, I think. I'm 
yeah, let's see what this does for the giraffe. Maybe nothing. Maybe super cool. We just don't know yet, right? Oh. Well, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> we might have just decapitated him. Hard to tell. <laughs> Alright, let's just go on and see. Okay, he might have some major issues. I'm not really sure. So, I'm just going to use what? Oh, he did come out. He's very light, but he's there. Super cool, right? Okay, now what can you use these for? You know what? They're like a painted paper. Um, you can tear out your image and collage it onto a canvas or a journal page. You can, you know, tear them in strips for collage. You can use it as a focal image. This one's kind of cute. You can paint it. I bet you could use, because um, it's got, you know, craft acrylic has that chalky kind of texture. I bet it would work really good with uh, like chalks or pastels or even colored pencils over it. Um, you could probably marker over it. You can doodle over it, outline it. Um, fold it up and get you a whole bunch of them, fold them together and use those to practice your Coptic stitch binding, you know. Just, they're just fun painted papers or images that you can use just like you would any other painting paper or image or whatever. So don't, don't get too hung up with what am I going to do with it. Um, just do it because it's fun. <laughs> Let's do a black and white. Let's do... What did I pull off of here? I don't know about her. These guys. I bet these guys will do fairly well if I get the amount of ink right. So... Let's just see. There we go. I think I want to put some neons on here. This is uh, multi-surface neon yellow. And that's not it. Here it is. Multi-surface neon blue. And then a little, no, I'm just going to put the neons. I'm not even going to add white. I need more. The 
that more might have been a little too much. We'll find out. Nope, that turned out perfectly. Those two little guys down there. y'all and it's so easy to do <laughs> you can just use up a bunch of your craft paint and just find you some magazine image try your fashion magazines the paper in a fashion magazine is usually not real thick like these are and not quite as glossy so you may have to you know kind of adjust the amount of paint that you use and the pressure and the time you leave it on but um, they'll work. I think they'll work. Okay. Let me try this one out of my illustration book. This kind of squishes it down good, plus it cleans off my brayer a little bit. And you may have noticed I'm using one brayer for the black uh, background and then another brayer for my lighter colors so that I don't have to keep cleaning them off. If I lift it up and it's still too juicy, it looks awfully juicy, then I stick it back down. Rub some more. And try again. There we go. use this brown like that and then this white and then boom some pink okay that was espresso and snow titanium white and this is gumdrop pink right there in the middle
we get the idea here? It's hit or miss. Fortunately, I think I've had more hits than misses. Um, a couple of the Nat Geo ones. I started off with too little ink and too much pressure. Or, you know, I left it on there too long. So I'm trying one more. See if I can get it right. Maybe. Maybe a little bit. I've got a lot of brayer marks in there. I may just need to clean off my brayers and my plate to get a good uh, print. Well, come on. can't remember what it looked like, so I'm saying that. I'm thinking that one didn't work out too well. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I really think I need to just clean my, my stuff off uh, before I go any further. But we did end up with some excellent prints. That was from the MGM book. That was an illustration. And that one, and that one, the illustration book just did really well. And that was the MGM book. Another illustration. A Nat Geo. And another Nat Geo. That one, I don't know. I think I can do something with that. This one I'm just loving, 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 loving. Yeah. Okay, so that's it. Give this technique a try. Um, don't worry about it if you have like 15 fails in a row. Just adjust the amount of ink that you're putting down and the time that you spend, you know, doing this, and you'll get it. Um, and even when you get it, sometimes you don't get it. So don't worry about it. <laughs> and I hope you have fun with it. That is all. The end. And, oh, uh oh. <laughs> Excuse me. Seen before. I'll find that video and I'll put a link either here or down there. <laughs> Not down there. <laughs> Start over. <laughs>